Aw, yes. Mega Man. Just like with pretty much every previous game I've covered in the Mega Man franchise, I've been looking forward to taking a look at Mega Man 5 ever since I finished playing Mega Man 4 a couple of months ago now. There's something about the Mega Man series that just keeps drawing me back in. Like, for whatever reason, every time I complete one, I immediately want to start the next one. Ever since about Mega Man 3, each subsequent game I've played has basically become my new favorite, so I've been super eager to see if that trend holds up in the next entry. Combine that with the fact that I've spent the past five weeks pretty much engulfed in the Spooktober Spooky Games Marathon, kind of locking me out of my favorite genre for a while, and is it really any surprise that this is the first game I decided to play the first week it's over? I'm really excited to dive into this title, so without any further ado, let's take a look at Mega Man 5. Mega Man 5 opens with yet another rather impressive cutscene. Everything appears to have been peaceful after Dr. Wily's apparent escape at the end of the previous game. That is until a vicious band of robots appears out of nowhere and begins to terrorize the city, led by none other than Mega Man's own brother Proto Man, it was just Dr. Wily the whole time. As Mega Man, it is, once again, for the fifth time, your job to defeat the eight members of the fake Proto Man's gang of robot masters, take down the evil doctor in his castle, rescue Dr. Light, who got himself kidnapped in that opening cutscene, and save the day. If you were hoping Mega Man 5 would be the NES game to radically change up the feel of the franchise, you will unfortunately be disappointed. Mega Man controls more or less exactly the same as previous incarnations. You can still move, jump, fire bullets, slide, and hold the B button to charge up a powerful Mega Buster Blast. The way Mega Man games feel to control is certainly an acquired taste, but it is also a taste that's quite difficult not to acquire once you're covering your fifth entry, so I am pleased to report that all seems in order on that front. I would once again be remiss to not mention just how magnificent this game looks. The amount of detail in the sprites and backgrounds are truly unmatched in any of the previous games. I honestly feel like such a strong and competent art direction is what has given this franchise such staying power in my mind. The fifth game offers yet another phenomenal Mega Man soundtrack, which at this point the series has more or less come to be known for. I really feel like putting background music in my video has given me a newfound appreciation for the awesome compositions featured here. Of course, as always, the presentation and controls only really matter if the stages are fun to play. The eight Robot Master stages should be nothing new to you at this point. You can complete them in any order, each level ends at a boss fight, and every time you defeat a Robot Master you gain their weapon, which another Robot Master will be weak to. These stages make up the first half of the game and are a huge part of any entry's identity. You can almost always expect the first eight stages of any Mega Man game to be good, and I'm pleased to report that this trend line has held up well in the fifth game. The Robot Master stages in Mega Man 4 were personally my favorite in the series so far, but I honestly think the levels in Mega Man 5 will now be occupying that space. I feel like this is the first time in a Mega Man game that I have actually really felt a shift in the design philosophy even early on. One of the things I noticed pretty much immediately is that it appears that checkpoints are much harder to come by this time around. Like, I constantly found myself dying and being genuinely surprised to find myself all the way back at the beginning of the stage. This was obviously frustrating at first because the shift in design language wasn't immediately apparent. Let me explain. All the way back in the first game, it was pretty commonplace for a level to be designed via just throwing enemies at you and projectiles everywhere on screen. Most times, taking damage felt unavoidable, and the best strategy to win was simply to throw yourself at the stage over and over again until you got lucky. Starting with Mega Man 2, each subsequent game has improved enemy placement and fairness and level design. Finally culminating with Mega Man 5, where the focus has now officially shifted to trial and error and mastering a difficult platforming segment to make your way to the end. This revelation finally came to me while playing through the first Proto Man stages, part of the Dr. Wily stages that make up the back half of the game. The first Proto Man level would initially appear to be very much a random onslaught of bad guys that you have very little hope of avoiding. I quickly learned, however, that the sequence was extremely learnable and also very possible without taking any damage. The improvement in quality of the Dr. Wily stages has probably been the most notable over time. They've historically been much less enjoyable to me than the Robot Master levels, and as such, I've paid a lot of attention to them with each subsequent game. Mega Man 5 is probably the first Mega Man game where the Wily stages offer genuine competition to the first half of the game. These levels are quite challenging, but in a completely fair way that makes you master each section of a stage before you can progress, exactly like I like in my platformers. 
There are also a pretty decent variety of level gimmicks on display here, like there's the one that takes place underwater with moving gear platforms, and my personal favorite, this level that has you shoot out support pillars to bring parts of the stage down on top of you in order to progress. This amount of fairness also translates to some of the best boss fights the Blue Bomber has ever seen so far. I genuinely enjoyed pretty much every Robot Master fight I took on, with each one having a genuinely unique pattern that requires tight execution and technical know-how in order to prevail. Special weapons have become pretty much obsolete outside of regular fights after Mega Man 2, especially after the addition of the charge shot in Mega Man 4, and as such they are more or less judged at this point based on how fun they are to use against the Robot Masters. The special weapons play very well into these battles, although honestly, I really enjoyed some of the bosses that required well-timed Mega Buster Blasts to deal damage. I honestly felt like there was a very good variety of gameplay styles. This is the first game to introduce Beat, a robot bird companion that you can earn if you collect the letters to spell Mega Man 5 hidden throughout the Robot Master stages. Beat really comes in handy to pretty much clear out certain rooms when you don't want baddies interrupting your platforming. Beat is also the primary weapon to a couple of bosses, leading to really cool fights where instead of being on the offensive, you simply have to try to dodge attacks and stay alive long enough for them to be taken down. This is actually the first time I've turned off the Legacy Collection's Turbo CPU mode, because the slowdown caused in some of these fights is absolutely necessary to get through their aggressive patterns. I had an absolute blast mastering these movements, and I really feel like I've become better at Mega Man. Mega Man 5 is probably the first game in the series I have no real complaints about. Sure, it isn't perfect, no game is, but when I really try to sit down and think about what exactly I would change if I could, I come up blank. This is the realization of the potential of the Mega Man formula I've been looking forward to since the second game. The difficulty is right, the pacing is right, the length is right, and for the first time ever when I finished a Mega Man game, I was left wanting to play more. A lot of people talk about how throughout the first six NES games, Capcom failed to really innovate much at all in the later entries. And while I see where they come from with that, I guarantee you at some point I will mix up levels from 4 and 5, what I see instead is a gradual polishing of the blueprint laid out in the first game in a quest to make the truly perfect Mega Man title. If you're a fan of the Mega Man franchise, Mega Man 5 is a must play. Just pick up the Legacy Collection because it's like $100 on eBay. And that's about all I have to say about Mega Man 5. Hopefully you enjoyed this video, I've really been looking forward to getting back into the groove of things after Spooktober, and this is really the perfect opportunity to do so. I also want to take a moment to thank you all once again for the absolutely outstanding support I've received over the past few weeks. My channel is doing better than ever, and I couldn't do it without you. Of course, if you want to get in on the support, you can always like the video, comment down below telling me anything you want, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. If you'd like to check out my second channel, where I've been posting occasional Pokemon content, I'll link that down below, as well as all the music I used in this video. With that being said, I'll see you all in the next one, and as always, thanks for watching.